real fast this morning on something that's been gnawing at me and messing with me. Paul said to the seasoned the- the Thessalonians, these were the praise singers and these were the preachers and these were the, the, the apostolics and they already knew how to discern seasons and times. He already taught them. He said, hang on. You need to discern something specific about the time. It is not about dates, somebody, or theological mathematics or arguing about pre and mid. and Don't do that. But there's a critical nature of how this thing is actually going to go down. He said the campaign for safety and world peace is going to go up. I wish I had somebody. He was advising us to focus on the massive attribute of that time. He said there will be an influx in the message of peace and safety. And it's a strategic numbing campaign to demonically comfort you. It will be a nonstop effort to foster political correctness, inclusivism, equity, equality, safety, global unity, and world peace. It will put the world to sleep. Only to be woken up and unable to escape. The wokeness is putting us to sleep. I wish I had somebody. We are in a time of unprecedented playing. There's an old song. She said, players only love you when they're playing. I hate to feel played. Something ought to irritate the saints with, when Hollywood tries to comfort you and make you feel like everything is all right. When a politician tries to tell you it's going to be all right, we never needed their help in the first place. And guess what? The word says it's not going to be all right. Hallelujah. I want to talk real fast on pounding sand. Who's ever heard of that idiomatic expression, pounding sand? I used to tell my grandmother, I was like, Grandma, you're the best cook in the neighborhood. She would lower her newspaper, look at me, she'd, Are you pounding sand, Joseph? She knew I was using flattery and compliments to ask her to go heat up the soup. I don't like when people just beat around the bush and and waste my time. What would you like? What we are in a time of flattery and kissing and playing, a bunch of Judas is running around. Listen. Don't come for me like it's peace and safety. I know what the word says. It's going to be sudden destruction. Sister Heather, I don't like to feel played. Talk to me. They want peace and safety. It's not about that. It's about seduction and shutting up the saints who go around raising conviction levels. Do you know the people that will tell you, they'll tell, oh, calm down, you're too anxious. It's going to be all right, don't worry. They're really saying, can you stop talking about that? You're making me uncomfortable. They're saying, I don't want to offend you. What they're saying is, you're offending me. Paul said in the previous verse in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2, he said, saints, you already know the flavor of the Kool-Aid. He's coming like a thief in the night. God, you thought Satan knows how to be a a, a thief, and he's tricky. Nobody's going to snatch up the treasures of this earth like Jesus Christ. Oh, like a thief. I never saw this until last night. Can I share with you? He is going to play the part of a thief because he's going after the good stuff. A good thief don't announce the day or the hour he's going to show up. He won't get the good stuff. He's coming back for the ones that have been preparing themselves every day, in and out, in seasons up, seasons down, instant, in and out. They've been praying. They've been living. They're not watching CNN or Fox to figure out if it's time to get right. He's coming after the good stuff like a thief. Do I have anybody? And there's an agenda of pounding sand today. It's nonstop flattery. Sister Burnett, I feel it. They're trying to calm the church, the anxious church. They want to shut the anxious saints up. 
He's been doing that since Eve. Eve, you can have it. It won't kill you. He wants to take the consequence of our sin out. He wants to liberate and, and make everything free and inclusive. That doesn't matter what you do. It's all good. It's, he's trying to numb our world and put us to sleep. It's okay, uh, uh, Samson. Just lay down. You're too anxious. Calm down a little bit. It's okay, Esau. Your birthright. Uh, come on, really? It's just your birthright. Go ahead and feed your appetite. Peter even got a little carried away and pounding sand. He said, I'm not like the rest. I'll never betray you. Jesus said, we got to stop talking sugar-coated stuff. Listen, we need a revival yesterday. <laughs> David said in Psalm 30 and 6, I'm, I'm done. 30 and 6, in my prosperity, I said I could never be moved. There's something about a pay raise. There's something about a new set of wheels. There's something about having comfort and prosperity that numbs the fired up saint. You know it's true. You know it's true. Why? We, we, he doesn't mind if we're comfortable and prosperous. That is actually a good opportunity for you to grow cold and complacent. This is old hat. Paul was preaching to the saints. He said, you got it. Twit Listen, this thing is going to happen. They're going to seduce you. We're under a spell. Anybody want a revival in your life? You're tired of being played by a demonic force. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 He's tricking the entire world right now to buy into a safety plan. Proverbs 24 and 33. You may stand to your feet. Proverbs 24 and 33 says, yet a little sleep. Just a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come in as one travaileth, and thy want is an armed man. I wanted to come to this pulpit today, and I know we're jumping around, and I believe that the fired up experience in an apostolic church gets better as the saints grow more and more aware how close we are are if you feel in your personal life that there is we are inching our way at uh, actually at a rapid pace you feel in your personal life what you're witnessing at work what you feel in your heart if you feel that conviction i want you to stretch your hands to heaven who believes we're close who believes we're close this is the number one thing he's after is your conviction that jesus is coming soon Nothing else gets people moving. The early church, they busted a move because they believe he's coming back. I want you to stretch both your hands to heaven and begin to talk to him. God, I plead your blood over our minds, over our hearts. I rebuke the adversary. Safety and peace. God, let me buy into your word more than I buy into a false hope. In the name of Jesus. Come on and lift your voice. Talk to him. Come on, saints of the most high. Come on, Zion, lift your voice. We've got to get ready. Jesus is coming soon.